The way they're getting such a massive guitar sound on this song really comes down to the contrast in the arrangement, making great use of the quiet loud dynamics and some smart guitar tracking choices. So Green Day just dropped their new album Saviors, and Bobby Socks is definitely one of the more interesting cuts from the record. It's different from the typical sound Green Day usually goes for, it definitely reminds me of some of the noisier garage punk bands like Fiddler, with all the blaring guitars and shots of feedback laced throughout the track. With that said, let's take a look at this song, and I'll break down what they're doing from both a production and arrangement perspective, so you can try and use some of their songwriting tricks in your own music. The first thing that really stands out to me in this song is a change in the dynamics throughout. They make great use of the stereo field by stripping back certain sections to the bass elements of the song and then building things back up again once you get to the choruses and solo. It's something I love to hear in productions and something you should try in your own tracks too. Instead of defaulting to having every element of the arrangement playing throughout a track, try removing certain instruments to help vary the dynamics of your song. For instance, you could try dropping out some low-end elements like a bass in your pre-chorus. This will then give your pre-chorus more of an empty sound which then makes your chorus sound massive in contrast. This makes songs like Bobby Sock so much more fun and interesting to listen to, as there's lots going on in the arrangement as the song transitions from section to section. Even small moments like the dropout before the guitar solo really helps to bring the energy down just slightly before ramping up into another big song section. If it wasn't for these clever arrangement moments, the song would sound quite dull and lack impact. You really need these spots of collapsing down a stereo field or dropping out low-end elements to give your track depth and punch. The way they're getting such a massive guitar sound on this song really comes down to the contrast in the arrangement, making great use of the quiet loud dynamics and some smart guitar tracking choices. For example, all of the intro and verses are played on this roomy sounding guitar track. which is just a single track guitar that's placed in the centre of the mix. Now what's great about this is that we don't get any side information until the full band kicks in. It's a really good songwriting trick, by holding back in these quieter moments it makes the bigger sections of the track sound that much more impactful once they finally hit. Well, the place I wanna be. As for the main guitars, it sounds to me like they're quad tracking most of these sections. Using lots of layers of guitars is nothing new for Green Day at this point, it's something they've been doing consistently since American Idiot which a lot of the production of this new record really reminds me of. Most likely because they also brought longtime producer Rob Cavallo back, along with having Chris Lord Algy to once again mix a record and Ted Jensen mastering. Speaking of mastering, if you've been looking to get your own trusted mastering engineer, along with free masters every month, unlimited feedback on your own mixers, and courses to help improve your mixing and mastering skills, look no further than Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering membership. Get all this and more for just $15 per month. Check out the link in the description to sign up today. So if I solo out the guitars, you can make out there's a few more layers going on. Something that can tip you off when bands are using layered tricks like quad tracking is listening out for spots like string slides in the guitar tracks. It seems sound different when they're layered up compared to just standard double tracking. Just take a listen to when Billy plays some string slides in the last chorus and you can tell there's quite a few layers of guitars being played all at the same time. Oh, and if you're unfamiliar with the term quad tracking, it's just a fancy way of saying they've recorded four individual guitar tracks. These are then often hard panned left and right, giving you that wall of guitar sound that you'll hear on many Green Day records. The goal here, especially in the case of a band like Green Day's, is to make all of these individual layers sound like one gigantic guitar sound. So you want things to blend together somewhat, to almost trick the listener into thinking they're only hearing one single stereo guitar track instead of four individual layers. Another nice part of the production is the bass. Mike uses a nice balance of his more simplistic approach on records like American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown, and a more feel-heavy bass playing like on Nimrod. Take a listen to the bass in the verse, and you can hear the nice fills he slots in, while keeping locked in with Trey's kick drum pattern. Well, for the bigger sections of the song, Mike goes back to playing simple root notes to help fill out the low end of the mix, making these sections sound that much more powerful. Do you wanna be my 
And if you want to know why Mike switched up his bass playing like this, check out this video next to find out. <laughs> 